Eight years of being a PJ Masks fan, and yet it has reached to the next level. New characters, new designs, new theme song, and so much more. The second TV show titled PJ Masks Power Heroes released on April 19th, 2023, and with the episode Luna's Moon Attack of the first TV series to be the final episode of season 5, which released on November 18th, 2022 which marks five seasons of PJ Masks being officially complete, and now the Power Hero series marks the first season, and biologically the sixth season of PJ Masks. My name is Ultimate, here to give you my thoughts on PJ Masks Power Heroes. Back in 2015, each episode of the series usually starts off with three kids, Connor, Greg, and Amaya doing daily things with each other, as well as with their other friends. And then, all of a sudden, something bad or unusual happens, and it is up to the three nighttime superheroes to find out who is the cause of it. It has to be a nighttime villain! PJ Masks, we're on our way! Into the night to save the day! When night falls, they transform into PJ Masks, Catboy, Gecko, and Owlet, and head to HQ to find clues, and they either take the cat car, the owl glider, or the Gecko mobile. The villains that the PJ Mask casually put a stop to is Romeo, a mad scientist who always plans on world domination, Night Ninja, a ninja who always wants to be the best, and Luna Girl, a moon-obsessed girl who wants to steal the daytime kid's fun. The PJ Masks always come up with plans to put a stop to their evil schemes, but one of them thinks they know or don't know what to do, and it would result in them partially messing up or failing the mission. But they make up for it by apologizing and coming up with a new plan. Only this time, they work together, like the super team they are. After the plan worked, the villains get defeated, and they shout that they will come up with another plan that they will eventually succeed at, while the PJ Masks chant their victory by saying, PJ Masks, I'll shout hooray! Cause in the night we save the day! And lastly, the episode ends with the PJ Masks, now in their civilian forms, hanging out with each other in peace. Now, before we get into PJ Masks Power Heroes, let me share to you some facts about PJ Masks from seasons 1 through 5 that we know so far. In season 1, each episode has a title card with the name of a PJ Masks member being shown on screen, plus the color of the font that demonstrates or hints which superhero the episode focuses on. At the beginning of every transformation sequence, when it goes from daytime to nighttime, if you look closely, you can see that the buildings behind the characters' homes are crooked. But starting from Season 2 onward, they're all straight. Season 1 focuses on the primary villains, Romeo, Night Ninja, and Luna Girl. But in Season 2, there are new villains, like the Wolfie Kids, a gang-like trio of werewolves, and heroes like PJ Robot the PJ's robotic ally and Romeo's former sidekick, and Armadillon, an inexperienced hero whom recently got his powers back after not having them for so long. But it's not just new characters, even the animation itself has changed, and so has the color of the fonts. But the episode still focuses on one of the characters, which we later found out as we kept watching. However, the new characters as well as the animation are not the only thing present in the season. The PJ Masks develop new powers from the PJ Crystal, which PJ Robot found when he first started working for the PJ Masks in the episodes PJ Robot and PJ Power Up. The PJ Masks finding a portal to another world called Mystery Mountain, and taking trips to the moon. If you guys thought this was pretty interesting, then the TV show is about to reach new heights in Season 3. Or Season 4, as you can tell by one of the promotional posters that can be found on the internet. In Season 3, starting from this season onward, all the episode title cards are highlighted blue, 
with the exception of one episode as it is highlighted green. But that's not all. So many male voice actors have been replaced with new voice actors due to the previous ones going through puberty, and that the characters' voices have been noticeably deeper than the previous seasons. Not to mention more new characters like Anyu, the dragon and protector of Mystery Mountain, Matsuki, an alien-like Matgro who hatched from a strange crystal on the moon and is Luna Girl's adoptive sister, and the Splat Monster. Well, specifically Teeny Weenie, a tiny ninjalino who used to be one of Night Ninja's henchmen. However, unlike Season 3, Teeny Weenie only made one appearance in Seasons 1, 2, 4, and 5, making Season 3 the only season where Teeny Weenie has made multiple appearances. <laughs> And you did make a first appearance in season 2, except she was in her dragon form, and she only turns into a human when the person in hold of the special mallet hits the dragon gong twice. And that's when Anyu shows up in front of Night Ninja to retrieve her flute in the season 3 episode, Meet Anyu. And fun fact, the dragon gong was displayed at the museum and was stolen by Night Ninja just to make the dragon his master. In the very first episode of Season 3, Luna Girl took one moth with her to the moon and seems to grow very fond of her and enjoys bossing her around. She named her Matsuki, which, fun fact, is Japanese for moon, gave her powers and officially makes her her henchman. Matsuki remained as a moth until in the 12th episode, where she hatches from a crystal and transforms into a humanoid moth with the ability to speak. However, Luna Girl and Matsuki constantly argue, like most siblings do. In the 11th episode of Season 3, taking place at Mystery Mountain, Teeny Weenie accidentally discovers a hidden room with a transforming splat, which Night Ninja is afraid to enter after reading a scroll and sends Teeny Weenie inside. Teeny Weenie then falls into the transforming splat when he sneezed, but luckily he wasn't hurt. But when he sneezed again, he transforms into a big red splat monster, scaring Night Ninja and the Ninjalinos, and then transforms back to normal when he sneezed again. We're also not going to ignore the fact that there are new vehicles in the season, like Romeo's Flying Factory created by Romeo, the Wolf Wheels which was unintentionally created by Romeo and Luna Girl, and the PJ Seeker created by PJ Robot. Plus, we also see in that one episode titled, Gecko Everywhere, the final scene foreshadows an upcoming villain for season 4. Which, spoiler alert, is an octopus-like sea witch. Okay, moving on. In the very first episode of season 4 titled, Heroes of the Sky, Romeo was gonna steal not only Luna and Matsuki's crystals, but the PJ crystal as well which he kind of, but not officially, succeeded at. And it was because of Luna and Owlette's arguments. HQ violently landed on the ground after Romeo's flybots lifted it high to take the PJ Crystal to the flying factory. And the PJ vehicle started malfunctioning due to Romeo draining the power from the PJ Crystal right before they got destroyed. And to make matters worse, due to Romeo draining part of the PJ Crystal, Owlette lost not only her PJ powers, but her memory of becoming a PJ mask. Owlette? Who's that? So, in the daytime, Connor and Greg try to remind Amaya about what Romeo was going to do with the PJ crystal. Plus, try to get her to remember about who she really is. But Amaya has no clue who or what they were talking about, nor doing and failed multiple times. Connor and Greg sadly gave up on her and began focusing on stopping Romeo instead. Amaya hears the sounds that only she can hear and she finds a small blue crystal which apparently she passes this off as a stone and takes it with her. Before Amaya was about to walk into her home, she finds another small crystal except it was green and she also takes it with her. 
Night falls, with the Maya heading off the bed, Connor and Greg transforming into Catboy and Gecko to find PJ Robot, and witness the damage in HQ caused by Romeo's flybots. Catboy and Gecko take the PJ Rovers to find Luna and Matsuki, and they did. Luna and Matsuki didn't want to help them at first because they lost everything. But when they heard that Owlette is not coming to help them, they change their minds and they all get attacked and swarmed by flybots. Except Matsuki, who stays behind to sneak into Romeo's flying factory. At Amaya's house, Amaya wakes up due to the sounds of the small crystals she found yesterday glowing and moving by themselves, and walks outside holding them in a box following to where they point to. When Catboy, Gecko, and Luna return to HQ, Peacher Robot gives the boys jetpacks and helmets to help them fly, and uses some of his energy to recharge Luna's Luna board. Matsuki also returns to HQ and tells Luna that Romeo is going to drain all the powers from the crystals in order to create multiple sky factories to take over the world. While being aware of Romeo's plan, the group tries to take out the flybots on their own before it was too late. Amaya still follows to where the blue and green crystals were pointing at before she stumbles upon one more small crystal, which was red, hiding in a pile of trees. Then, the three reunited crystals lead her to HQ and the chaos between Catboy, Gecko, Luna, and the Flybots. Amaya starts glowing red and begins to remember everything, transforming into Owlette and using her Owlwing Wind to blow the Flybots away. They were all happy to see Owlette and apologized for giving up on her, and always knew she was a PJ Mask deep down. Owlette apologizes as well for forgetting what being a PJ Mask is truly about, which was doing the right thing and helping everyone, even villains. They all put that trouble behind and work together to stop Romeo. However, the PJ Power Crystals glow once again, while their suits glow in response, transforming into newly upgraded versions of the PJ Mask vehicles. While Romeo drained most of the powers from the PJ Crystal, the PJs begin to feel weak and start to lose their powers, but with no time to waste, they all jump inside their newly upgraded vehicles. Catboy and Gecko defeat the Flybots using new powers from their vehicles while Owlette, along with Luna, Matsuki, and PJ Robot head to the Flying Factory where Owlette puts a stop to the Flybots and Romeo. But before taking the PJ Crystal out of the chamber, she notices Luna falling on the computer screen from the Owl Glider trying to dodge the Flybots after hanging, causing Owlette to make a decision, saving the PJ Crystal or Luna Girl. Despite not having any powers, she rushes to save Luna before it was too late. Since Owlette made the right decision, she begins to get her powers back after the PJ Crystal's power was restored. The two girls return to the Flying Factory and to the Owl Glider before the Flying Factory reaches space. The PJ Crystal releases three different colored rays and begin to head towards the PJ's upgraded vehicles, resulting in them to get sent in midair and them combine together creating a new aircraft called the PJ Jet. Whoa, it's the PJ Crystal Power! Romeo then arrives to the main controls of the Flying Factory even though the PJ Crystal was acting up, he creates more Sky Factories so he can take over the world. Owlette and Luna arrive back to the Flying Factory to disable the power chamber from the PJ Crystal to collect the crystals and take the PJ Crystal back, causing the factory to lose power and fall back to Earth. The factories that Romeo created began to fall down as well as shrink. While the heroes return to the PJ Jet, Romeo falls from his flying factory when he was losing control and parachutes down the robot practicing his victory dance in town. An angry Romeo vows to the heroes that he will rule the world one day and escapes with Robot, calmly holding one of the miniature versions of his flying factory in his hands. At HQ, everyone returns to put the PJ Crystal back into place and it regains its powers, returning to its normal state. Owlette then gives the Moon Crystals to Luna and Matsuki, restoring Luna's Lunar Fortress and Matsuki back to her humanoid-like moth form. Luna thanks the PJs for their help and especially to Owlette, 
They all celebrate by having a tea party using a regular tea set and not the space themed ones that Luna stole from the museum the other night. And have a dance party together before chanting their victory. So, as of season 4 onward, the PJ Masks have newly upgraded vehicles as well as new characters introduced, such as Newton Star, a space hero who was active in both daytime and nighttime, Monkey Goo, a mischievous monkey that was accidentally freed by Gecko after being trapped in stone for a thousand years for being too naughty, Octobella, a humanoid octopus-like girl who lives in the moat, and biologically her crystal garden, collects crystals and is the archenemy of Gecko for unknowingly taking some power pond weed, which she considers to be her property, Percival, Octobella's shrimp sidekick, and Pharaoh Boy, a mummy of a young king from ancient Egypt and the world beyond, always traveling to Earth through a portal inside a Sphinx statue located at the museum. Another vehicle called the PJ Sub, which was built by PJ Robot in the final episode, Bubbles of Badness, was used for underwater exploration. And now, we jump into the fifth and final season of PJ Masks, and this is where things get extremely interesting, starting with the first episode, Ninja Power Up. Night Ninja gets frustrated after getting defeated by the PJ Masks 1,075 times. However, as the ninjas watch the PJ Masks return to their homes, they have an idea. Night Ninja and his ninjalinos gather together once again at the school to come up with a plan to steal the PJ's powers by spying on them in both their homes and HQ. The PJ Masks become overconfident in their powers because of their victories being too easy for them, while Night Ninja gains crucial insight in the source of the PJ's powers, including their pajamas, amulets, and the PJ Crystal. Night Ninja heads to the library and finds a book on how to not only control the PJ Crystal, but to transfer the PJ's powers to himself. And in order to complete the ritual, Night Ninja orders an Ninjalino to distract the PJs while he and the rest break into HQ. With all three animals used as well as a spell from the book, Night Ninja successfully transfers the PJ's powers to himself and the Ninjalinos. The PJ Masks now know that something was wrong, resulting in them losing their powers, being changed back to their civilian forms, and being forced to abandon HQ, which Night Ninja claims for himself. The animals still possess some of the PJ's powers, which Night Ninja was unaware of after releasing them outside, since they no longer serve a purpose to him or his Ninjalinos. The PJ Masks, now in their civilian forms along with PJ Robot, regroup at the library, realizing that they should have taken their powers more seriously. As several hours pass, the three friends try to search for another book, but sadly, Night Ninja took the only one. However, they did find a comic book about a reptile-themed superhero named Slitter Boy, who once lost his and regained his powers back by training, giving the PJs an idea. They all gather the three animals and train them to fight Night Ninja using the powers they still possess. With PJ Robot and the animals backing them up, the PJs then head back to HQ. They manage to get inside and fight off the Ninjalinos long enough for Amaya to find the book that Night Ninja used to transfer the powers to himself and the Ninjalinos. They repeat the ritual, plus promise the PJ Crystal that they will take their powers more seriously from this night forward which eventually works, and the PJ Masks, now in their superhero alter egos, have not only their powers restored, but are each given a new superpower, forcing Night Ninja and his Ninjalinos to retreat. But they are not the only ones, as they discover that HQ gets an upgrade, where each floor now contains new devices for the PJs to use to monitor the city for trouble. Catboy also notices that something is going on with the PJ Crystal, wondering what is inside, but the mystery remains unknown for now, since the book does not provide any answers. In the second episode, Luna Goes Too Far, Luna tricks the PJs into thinking that her Luna Fortress was out of control, and that Matsuki teleported her to safety, just so that she can get back to the moon and steal Matsuki's teleportation powers, which they later go haywire and ended up teleporting both her and Matsuki from the fortress 
onto nearby asteroids. And as a result, Luna drops her magnet. The PJs call for help from PJ Robots of Freedom, but the magnet that they found glitches again and teleports their rocket ship away from the moon. The heroes try to use the magnet themselves, but they end up stranded onto the asteroids. Gecko and Outlet with Matsuki, and Catboy with Luna, who takes her magnet back from Catboy and makes another attempt at teleporting, only to end up floating in space. The PJs convince Luna to use the magnet to draw the asteroid with Matsuki towards her, to which Luna agrees. Matsuki takes back her teleportation powers and teleports everybody back to the moon. But sadly, Luna is still angry at Matsuki and refuses to adjust with her, prompting Matsuki to teleport HQ and everybody back to the city and claims the moon for herself. The PJs make one final attempt to have Luna apologize to Matsuki, but she refuses and goes back to causing trouble in the city and driving away in her go-kart preparing the PJs to deal with the upcoming trouble Luna will be causing. So, as of this episode onward, the Moon Girls formed a bitter rivalry against each other and Luna was kicked out of the moon after she admitted that she disliked living on the moon with her. Because of her backfire plan that would have put everyone at risk of being sent to outer space. Just like the other previous seasons, there are more new characters introduced in Season 5, like Orticia and Pirate Robot. In the episode, Orticia Blooms, where she made her first appearance, she was created from an ancient seed that came from a jungle far away 3,000 years ago, which Romeo not only stole from the museum, but also experimented on. Orticia only becomes antagonistic when someone disturbs her or stops her from growing her plants, and she begins using her powers to stop them from doing so. But since Orticia was created from one of Romeo's experiments, she doesn't know the meanings of life experience that a regular kid does, until she learned about friendship in the episode Pondweed Party, and became friends with the PJ Masks after helping them defeat Octobella. In Pirate Robot's episode, he was accidentally created by Romeo, and Night Ninja since his pirate hat fell into the machine while he and his Ninjalinos infiltrated a flying factory playing pirates, all the components and Night Ninja's pirate hat resulted in the creation of Pirate Robot. Avast me, hard disks! Tis I, Pirate Robot! Which he immediately turned on Romeo and became a villain. But in the next episode titled, I'll Let the Pirate Queen, Pirate Robot shifted from being a villain to a hero and allying with the PJs and the other heroes. But he can sometimes still clash with them through his actions. In the episode titled, Carly and Kartaka, multiple cars have been wrecked and stripped of various parts. At first, the three friends thought it was Romeo, but surprisingly to them, it wasn't. The PJs spot an unknown vehicle on the PJ picture player and they try to catch up to it by driving the cat car, which was difficult than they expected resulting in a minor crash. The drivers of the car get out and reveal themselves as Carly and Kartaka. And the reason why they stole car parts is to improve their vehicle called the Flash Car. Catboy wanted to outspeed the Speedy Twins and the Flash Car, but this resulted in the PJs to crash their vehicles and the Speedy Twins stealing the Owl Glider and the Gecko Mobile, as well as parts to upgrade their Flash Car and crushing the remains in the cubicles. To make matters worse, the Speedy Twins overhear Catboy mentioning that they have other vehicles in HQ and Kartaka breaks into HQ and steals the PJ Sub, the PJ Rovers, and the PJ Seeker. The PJs catch him in the act just before he can take the cat car too. Gecko and Owlette follow him outside, but are held up by Carly while Kartaka takes the parts he wants from the stolen vehicles. Catboy then chases after them with the cat car, while Owlette and Gecko can only watch. Something goes wrong with the PJ Crystal due to the destruction of the PJ vehicles. When the heroes and the PJ Pets gather together at HQ, Owlette calls Catboy to return to HQ to see what is going on with the PJ Crystal, but he was too focused on trying to catch up to the Speedy Twins. Carly and Kartaka suddenly open a portal, while Catboy, due to going too fast to stop and dodge it, accidentally gets through, leading to the Speedy Twins home world called Zoomzadia, a planet filled with the fastest and most hardest racetracks. The twins challenge Catboy to a race, while in HQ, 
Aula and Gecko suspect that the PJ Crystal is trying to help them, just like it did when Night Ninja stole their powers. The PJ Crystal tries to connect with them and the PJ Pets, but it was missing only one hero in order to finish whatever the PJ Crystal is planning. And it is, you guessed it, Catboy. The Speedy Twins take Catboy's cat car after Catboy loses the race to upgrade the Flash car once again. And they leave to get more car parts, leaving Catboy stranded in Zoom Xenia. When Ala and Gecko finally manage to contact him, Catboy apologizes for what he did and tries to make things right. But instead of using the cat car, which, along with the other PJ vehicles, now being out of commission, he still has his cat speed. After two failed attempts, he uses his cat speed to finish the racetrack and opens a portal back to the city, catching the Speedy Twins off guard. Catboy races back to HQ, and with all the PJ masks and the PJ pets together, the PJ Crystal begins connecting with them again, releasing and materializing the animal spirits of the heroes from the crystal in a form of three giant animals for the PJs to ride on called the PJ Riders, Eagle Owl, Cat Stripe King, and Power Lizard. With their spirit animals, the PJs confront and drive off the Speedy Twins. The PJs may have lost their vehicles, but with the help of their PJ Riders, they are ready to take on whatever challenge. In the next episode, while the PJs were having trouble taming the PJ Riders, as they don't feel like taking them for a ride and refuse to follow orders, PJ Robot gets kidnapped by the Speedy Twins and gets used as a battery to power the Flash Car. The PJ Riders knew PJ Robot was in trouble, making the PJs realize that they weren't listening to them and just treat them like there's something to ride, which they apologize for and they finally cooperate with them and are given with new costumes. With Catboy and Catstripe King's speed, they open a portal to Zoom Xenia while Owlet, Eagle Owl, Gecko, and Power Lizard follow behind. A few failed attempts later, the PJs now allow their riders to do things their way, and that resulted in knocking the Flash car off the tracks. After the PJs reclaim PJ Robot, the twins manage to escape before the heroes can reclaim their stolen vehicle parts. The PJs, PJ Robot, and the PJ Riders return to Earth and decide to get their parts back some other night. Which, spoiler alert, they successfully did five episodes later. Not only that, they also get new upgrades and features for their vehicles which are the same new powers that the PJs developed in the Season 2 episode, PJ Power Up. Okay, now we head to some trivia. PJ Masks had its own pilot episode that premiered on May 5th, 2022, where it showed the heroes defeating Luna Girl, who was originally named the Moon Girl. As I have noted before, most of the characters' voices, season after season, are noticeably deeper due to the voice actors going through puberty, which might be the reason why they have been replaced with new voice actors in order for the characters to remain having the voices of children because they are children. Season 5, unlike previous seasons, had major changes in the show, such as two new episode categories, Pirate Power, containing 8 episodes, and Animal Power, containing 9 episodes, Armadillon being fully absent, and storylines that extend for more than one episode regarding the PJs losing their vehicles and Luna being grounded on Earth. Seasons 1, 2, and 3 are the only seasons that have 26 episodes, but in seasons 4 and 5, there are 25. But surprisingly, they all remain having 52 segments. And now, we finally jump onto PJ Masks Power Heroes, where we went from 3 core superheroes to 9, including Armadillon from Season 2, Anu from Season 3, and Newton Star from Season 4. Starting from the first episode, where Romeo got a hold of the asteroid containing the power of badness, where it turns heroes into villains, plus gave him Night Ninja and Luna Girl new designs, as well as parts of the asteroid giving the rest of the nighttime villains even more negative and bad energy. 
A new kid named Ivan, who enrolled in Connor, Greg, and Amaya's school, made its first appearance in a new series. And a part of the asteroid containing the power of badness landed in his onesie. And it was up to the PJs, now in their civilian forms, to get it before it turns Ivan into a villain, which they sadly failed, but made another attempt in their superhero alter egos, but wasted their time due to the villains chasing the PJs, Newton, and and you to Romeo, capturing and surrounding them. Romeo then explained why he and the other villains captured the heroes and what he wanted from them, which was getting back at them by giving them bad powers, just like them. Newton uses his star power to get out of a trap, which he successfully did, blowing the villains away. But his friends were still trapped, and he was unable to save them because one of the villains still attempted to make him a villain, forcing Newton to retreat. But there was one thing that he still can do that the PJs should have done a while ago. And that is getting a piece of the asteroid containing the power of badness out of Ivan's onesie. But it was too late. Or was it? The asteroid transformed Ivan into a polar bear themed costume, but he was not feeling any villainous or negative energy from the asteroid as he noted that because of his good thoughts, it was positive energy and that he is a big fan of superheroes. But a confused Newton thought the asteroid would turn Ivan into a villain, as he explained to him about the power of badness, and a piece of the asteroid containing it flew into his onesie. But Ivan referred to himself as a hero, as well as his super name, Ice Cub. Much to Newton's relief, Ivan then explained to Newton that what he explained to him was just like in his superhero comic book that he read. If you think good thoughts, it turns into good power, and that can happen to anyone else. So the two friends head to the park to save the PJ Mask. Newton arrived the but is captured again. However, he tells the heroes that he has a plan. By fighting off the bad power getting into you, thinking good thoughts and changing the energy would turn the power into good. As the heroes think good thoughts, the asteroid acts up and frees the heroes and knocks some of the villains away and everything turning back to normal. The villains make another attempt at turning the heroes into villains, but Ice Cub shows up and protects the heroes and scaring off the villains. I'm Ice Cub! Hear me roar! Ice Cub then introduces himself to the heroes, and they recognize his voice knowing it was Ivan in a super costume and Ivan then recognized the voices behind those heroes, and Newton introduced Anu to him, and he did the same. The heroes began joining together, forming a new team called PJ Mask Power Heroes, and they take Ivan to their HQ and introduce him to PJ Robot. Suddenly, HQ starts shaking and the PJ Crystal shows up and the powers from the heroes creates a new headquarters in space called Power Q. So as of this season onward, the PJ Mask, as well as the rest of the Power Heroes, have their own new headquarters, ready to face whatever villain is up to no good. PJ Mask Power Heroes go shout hooray! Cause in the night, we save the day! Power Q contains an interior, as well as some features like the PJ Picture Player, Fire Furball, Antenna, and a ray that can give the PJs new equipment. And also, it has not only the PJ's new vehicles, but Newton's Neutron, the PJ Explorator, Ice Cub's Ice Dasher, Newton's Mega Suit, and Catboy's Cat Racer. As we have seen in the trailers as well as a the theme song, there are new heroes introduced and are part of the Power Heroes, like Bastet the Suncat from the World Beyond, and Lilyfay the Space Fairy from the other side of the universe. Armadillon, who only made an appearance in two episodes, has undergone character development, meaning as of season 6 onward, he is no longer gullible, clumsy, or short-tempered, like he once was in seasons 2, 3, and 4. And he learned to control his powers better and be a true hero, and according to fans, they hope to see Armadillon in the future. A new transformation sequence including not only Catboy, Gecko, and Owlette, but the rest of the heroes that are part of the Power Heroes, including Armadillon, and you, Newton Star, Ice Cub, Bastet, and the Lily Bay. Compared to the original transformation in PJ Masks, they are still the same, 
but with different movements, different voice actors, more characters, etc. We can also see some new locations such as Ice World, another world which contains nothing but ice, as well as a reindeer, and a new outer space planet called Gloop, where a new villain named Gloop the Third and his crew on which he calls his Gloopets, whom appeared in his episode Loop. Gloop the Third always gloops things as much as he wants to conquer worlds like Earth, which is his first target. In the final episode titled Return the Planet Gloop, Gloop the Third teams up with the Power Hero since Romeo wanted to destroy his home planet by tricking him into taking down the Power Heroes, which they successfully did. And from what I have heard that I never thought would happen, the PJs stopped the Gloop by asking him to join their team, meaning that they no longer have to stop him ever again. Okay everyone, this is where I end this video by saying PJ Mask Power Heroes is a really interesting show to watch after PJ Mask. And to some of y'all that have never seen PJ Mask or Power Heroes, I highly recommend watching it because of its colorful moments, lessons to learn, how unique the concepts are, and how likable the characters can be. If you guys really like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave your comment below to give out your opinion on the TV show, share this video with your friends, check out and watch the full episodes in the description below, and I'll see you all next time.